Hi, everyone. I'm Gunjan, and with me, I have Neil. Hi, Neil. Nice to see you again. Hi, Gunjan. Nice to see you. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so this is our first episode of the Data Project series. And what we're hoping to share with everybody today is what are the data projects, right? Uh, and then what are the risks associated with that data project? So Neil, could you please tell us what is a data project and what is it not? Good question. So a data project is a, uh, a joint IT business project where it requires both the business and the IT side to succeed. Exactly. And there is also, an, I mean, there's, there's a lot of projects like that. That's the first criteria. The second criterion is that there is a central to a data project is uh, bulk, um, large volumes of data that also have an, an historical aspect to them. So when you have a project with those two uh, aspects in mind, they tend to have a higher um, risk of failure than most other projects. So an example of the very simplest data project would be um, to produce a, a report by that the business needs where the business doesn't exactly know where the data is and how to get it and how right. to automate the extraction and production of that report, but they know that the data is out there and they have some sense of what um, mm -hmm. questions they want to answer with that report. Right. So that, and it might be segregated, right? Because I know in past the applications have defined where the data goes. So what you're pointing out is combining that data, structuring it from the unstructured way is part of that data project. Yeah, and there's usually a, a cross system aspect to it. So the data might not all be in one place where exactly. you can answer those questions. So that's a very typical data project. Another type of data project might be a business system migration. So right. migrating from uh, an in-house uh, homegrown CRM system into something like salesforce.com mm -hmm. or a homegrown HR system into Workday. Right. Uh, that's another data project because you will want to bring the history into that. You need exactly. to bring your client history and your staff history. And um, these projects are very prone to failure because uh, there's really two reasons. Mm -hmm. the, the first reason is uh, data gatekeeping. Right. Um, this is something that is, is often glossed over when you talk about data projects and there's this understanding that oh if we need the data we'll just get the data data obtainment no big deal the data is out there we'll get the data uh, there's a lot of motivations for not just handing the data out and um you know I, i've got we could talk about this at length there's all there's most of them are good faith but some of them yeah. are not such good faith um, whole conversation about data gatekeeping. It's a yeah. really fascinating topic, actually. So I think and that's kind of related to the data ownership as well, right? In past, data has been seen as more of an IT commodity, but what you're pointing out is it's actually not. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then the second reason that I'll, I'll give is uh, a lack of data connoisseur connoisseurship. Right. So there are these incredible uh, tools out there in terms of reporting and visualization and what you can do with data. And the, the people that are asking for reports, they don't often even know what's possible and what to ask for. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a huge problem. Right. And then, so that's the second problem. And then the third problem is you have, an, you have another Tower of Babel situation. So I mentioned earlier that they're cross-business IT. Yeah. And often there's a language mismatch issue going on there. I call it kind of a Tower of Babel situation. Yeah. And, but you have that, um, compounded in data projects because the people that are in technology, they themselves, um, if you have a traditional background in computer science like myself, um, comp sci degree from Waterloo, or even if you went to you know Seneca or uh, whatever, the types of skills that you learn around data are not going to be around built, uh, dealing with the hist historical aspects of data or the bulk sides of data. It's more about developing the applications and apps. Right. And if you and they're very application centric thinking in their data versus and they think in languages like Java and C and JavaScript, yeah. which is very procedural. And whereas data languages like SQL um, are very declarative and you think in sets and you think about right. what as opposed to hows. So even within the technology group, you don't have the competence that you think that you would have. And often I find that people who are in finance, like accountants and whatnot, have a better grasp of the historical aspect right. of data than technology people. So this just compounds that's your true. Tower of Babel situation. So that's sort of like combining the person who created the application with the context that lives with the business mind, right? That's kind of what you're saying. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, in, in, a, in an upcoming video, we can, we can talk about some of the yeah, ways absolutely. that we can deal with these risks. So just kind of recap the definition of the risk again. So the definition is it, it, a data project crosses the IT business chasm. It needs to have somebody in the business side who understands the business semantics and somebody right. in the technology side who understands the, the constraints and capabilities. And secondly, there is a bulk and historical data, data aspect to the project. Um, and then the, the, the reason why these projects are risky is because of data gatekeeping, a lack of data connoisseurship, and um, a lack of data skills within the technology departments. That was wonderful. And I'm so looking forward to the second episode in the series where we dive deeper into this to see how to resolve some of these problems, right? So I'm Absolutely. definitely looking forward to that. Thank you so much, Neil.